Hello there, my name is Len Gold and I'm part of the production team at Face Creative London and we are Digital Dynamite. This is going to be a very quick tutorial on how to prepare a PDF to send us from Quack. Um, sorry, Quark, sorry, Quirk. We have many digital output devices at Face and this PDF will be suitable for all of them. However, if we are producing hardback books or other specialised paper overboard materials for you, please contact either myself or your account manager. We will be very happy to supply more specialised artwork and PDF guidance. The only exception may be for the supply of contract proofs to test advertisements prior to newspaper or magazine insertion, in which case the PDF should be made to the publication's specifications, or by us. Here we go then. Firstly, click on File, then Export and Layout as PDF, and we get this dialog. It has the usual naming and saving options, which I will not bore you with. Click on Options. We are going to create a new captured setting. So click on Captured Settings, and from the drop-down menu, select New PDF Output Style at the bottom. It's many years since I last created a new style. You will now be asked what you want to call your new style. How about Face PDF Quack? Click on OK and it will always be there for you and will forever appear as a captured setting. OK, now we come to the actual settings. The Pages dialog first. For nearly all jobs, we require the Spreads box unchecked. Our imposition software will take care of page positioning. The only exception to that is for Roll or Concertina fold jobs where they have been set up as spreads in the correct page order for printing. There might be a use sometime to export as separate PDFs for each page, but can't think of one at the moment though, so leave that unchecked. Leave the Include Blank Pages checked. And leave unchecked the thumbnail thingy. Not interested in metadata? Don't want any hyperlinks. Next is the compression page, where we do have some things to do. Now it is very tempting to leave the setting as high, in the misconception that it means high quality. It doesn't. It means that the PDF will be highly compressed, which is not the best option. So change to automatic JPEG zip low, or zip JPEG low. This means that the PDF will not be very compressed, which is a good thing. It's best to downsample the pictures to 300 dpi. There really is no point in having them higher. It will just make the PDF file more megabytes for no increase in press output quality. Use the same setting for the grayscale images. So automatic zip JPEG low and downsample to 300 dpi. Monochrome is fine with CCITT Group 4, don't actually know what it means, downsampled to 1200 dpi. Leave compressed text and line art checked, and we certainly do not want anything to do with any ASCII format. That's the difficult page over with. And next is the colour page. Leave the mode as composite. The setup is best using composite, CMYK and spot. This might surprise you. The reason is that our conversion lookup tables for spot to CMYK are based on the particular inks that our presses use and should give a closer match to spot colours than the Quack or Pantone defaults. Our optimization software should take care of any other potential problems with this setting. We do not recommend this for other printers. They might do things differently. OK, font page next. Ensure that select all is checked. Marks. Centred, please, with the offset of 3mm to match the bleed. We don't actually need bleed marks. They can be either checked or not. It's your choice. Now, bleed. I really do hope that bleed has been allowed for in the job, or we will have problems. If you get a chance, please see our other video about making a PDF from InDesign. That video goes into bleed values in a lot more detail than here. Bleed type should be symmetric and check the clip at bleed edge box. Layers. Select all should be checked. 
the transparency page. Ooh. Ensure that the two boxes shown are checked. Again, our optimization software comes into play at this stage. If the job is going to another printer, shame on you. Please take their advice. Um, OPI, not needed. JDF, again, not needed. Lastly, the summary page where you can read all about it. Okay, job done. Click OK, save, and send to face. Now, I hope that was useful and not too boring. Stop press. As of today, the 25th of May 2011, our iPhone app is available to download from iTunes. And stop press. Tomorrow, we are having a brand new inkjet printer being delivered. All sorts of new clever stuff. Please speak to your account manager to find out what that's about. Okay then, that's all from me. Thank you for listening and watching. Not much to watch, I must admit. Bye bye.